Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's stream. Thank you for joining me and uh, straight off the bat if you're wondering why no YouTube? Well it's new regulations between Twitch and YouTube and there's no more crosstalk between the two of them. Nope, 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 nope. However if you did not make the stream in time on Twitch you get to see it on YouTube. So if you watch it on YouTube you didn't make the Twitch stream well you know now next time to go to the Twitch stream because uh, that's possibly where we'll be. But watch social media, we'll decide where we finally, finally land up uh, in all good time. Anyway, welcome, welcome to all of you who are watching. Welcome to Orlando, Florida in the house, as they say. Uh, I could say London, United Kingdom in the house as well. Uh, so let's get a shout out. Where are you guys watching from? Because I can see people are watching. Um, let's see, where is everyone from? It's, it's always great to connect. Uh, hopefully the weather is nice in Orlando. Anyway, I digress. I digress. You see how it, I, I, I'm just excited to, to, to engage with you folks. Dayton, Ohio. Ohio. Birthplace of Captain Kirk. Great place. Okay, good. Right. Now, what are we talking about today in the battle map editor and mapping it out behind the scenes of the battle map editor? Well, we're talking about the roadmap. We're looking at a live charity stream, which although the charity stream ended, the stream ended, the charity still runs until the end of the month. So we want to talk about uh, some things going on there. And we're going to unpack the maps that a certain someone that you all know and love made. And then we've got our community spotlight, as usual, followed, of course, later on by Deos and the, pack, the uh, unpacking of what is happening in Deos. And there's a big demo in Deos, so stay with us for that if you are also interested in how Deos works. If you have a question, please put the word question in caps in front of your question so that I can see it nice and clear in chat. And that will certainly help me to see what's going on and to ask your question. And if I don't ask your question immediately, it's because I'm waiting for Till to answer something else, or because I have a script for these shows, I know that your question will be better asked at a certain point later on. But uh, you never know, you might have to remind me. So here we go. And so let's bring in Till. Till is here. Hello, Till. Hello. Hi, hello from Vienna, Austria. <laughs> now, Hopefully, they, I don't think they heard you, so say that again. Okay. I'll say it again. Hi, everyone, and greetings from Vienna, Austria. There you go. Absolutely. Look at us. We're all over the world today. That's fantastic. Now we just need someone from, from the Asia-Pacific region, uh, and we'll have a full, a full deck of cards, uh, as they say. So, Till, we're looking at um, some information, some news, some updates on... The battle map editor um you mentioned when we were chatting earlier on this morning talking about today's show you're in the boring phase yes of software development what, what is the boring phase just quickly just quickly the boring phase is when all my developers everyone on the team has their tasks are working on it there are no crisis no problems everyone's just coding along and I'm sitting there and I'm wondering who actually needs me. There you go. <laughs> the boring phase. Well, you heard it here. It's a technical term for basically Till has nothing to do. Right. So, uh, giving you something to do, let's get some music from you as we go into our yeah. news. But the news. Ta ta. Ta-ta. There we go. They heard ta-ta. There we go. There we go. <laughs> right. Um, chat doesn't believe you. They say in real life, everything is broken all the time. Um, so, well, who knows? Yeah. Hopefully not. Right. We're talking Dungeon Fog news. And so let's jump straight into the roadmap that we are Yes, of at. course. Till, take us through the roadmap. Yeah. What's so um, if, you, if, you, if you didn't believe me that there is a boring phase previously, maybe you believe me now because nothing has changed on the roadmap from last month. Um, we are now um, approaching. I think we are approaching quarter three. I think we're still a few days, a few hours in quarter two. Um, and um, 
as I just said before, everyone's everyone's working away. Andy Andy is making quite good progress on the um, asset manager. I um, we are very close to actually show that to you. So there is it's it's not there yet. I feel like you would be disappointed um, if you would see it right now. But I don't want you to be disappointed. I want you to be excited about it. So. Um, we're holding back with the cool stuff until it's actually demoable. Um, Thomas and I had a meeting today. We were talking about team licenses. So that project has started. I think that is actually more like an internal thing. If you don't know what it means, it means that um, we are kind of restructuring the way that if a, if a university or uh, a bigger company needs several seats, for Matt accounts that they get access to that through one kind of primary account where they can then um, assign seats. Um, again, as I said before, um, several universities have approached us and said that they would like to use our tools. Um, my daughter is this fall going to join a Dungeons and Dragons class um, in like in after school activities. Um, and her teacher said it would be really nice if they could do maps. So there's, this is what team licenses is about. And pack cleanup is um, that. That's why I was actually lying when I said I haven't anything to do. Um, I do have pack cleanup to do, which I have already started. Um, and that basically means that I'm going through all the packs look at them, see how they can be restructured or combined differently. Because once the asset manager comes out, it makes sense to offer you different methods to search for assets or structure them. Um, and with the background system now being established, um, packs become more of a collection of things. It's not just tokens. It's not just props. It's also now backgrounds and probably maps in the future or templates in the future. So there's a lot happening there, which takes my my um, um, attention. Um, but that's what we are currently in. And there is nothing to show at the moment. It's just it's progress being made and everyone's happily working away um yeah so that's the boring thing for you on, the, yeah. on that uh, which i think is, is a salient question uh lensman de leon core asks is the new asset manager going to be the same online and in deos yes um so the new ma asset manager is specifically built um as as kind of uh, as a foundation for, so we wanted to test technologies. That's that's one of the, the reasons why we started with the new asset manager being a, um, being what it is. Um, so it is kind of foundational work for V6 because V6 will then allow the battle map editor to be part of Deus as well. Um, but the new asset manager will start online, of course, because that's where it's mostly needed at the moment. But it is developed in a way that it can actually run as a desktop application or inside a desktop application and even mobile apps. So if you're ever bored in a train ride um, and you want to restructure or sort your assets, um, there might be a Dungeon Fork asset organizer app in the future. <laughs> I think it's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, it's great. It's step one of uh, being able to just build maps on your mobile. But uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm not sure if you will ever be able to actually draw maps on your mobile. Um, Maybe if you had unlimited data, so you could download all of the assets. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think the, the, the biggest problem actually is the the um, the graphic performance. Um, most most smartphones are not capable of of bringing enough power to actually render drawing in, mm. especially with lighting and ray tracing and all of that stuff. Um, and we are not, to be honest, we're not skilled enough to, to actually squeeze every bit out of it to make it a mobile application um, that runs smoothly. 
Um, so I that is so frustrating to, to have to zoom in to place your asset and then zoom. You'd, it would be yeah. crazy. It might be interesting for tablet use, um, and oh. tablets are stronger. But again, I think. But still, if you if you think about the 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 thousands of assets that are now part of 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 the battle map editor may it be from the marketplace or the 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 content subscription where we constantly push new assets um the patreon subscriptions that can take place um and and the assets that people upload by themselves because they already have an archive or a library of of assets that they would like to reuse um it is important that you have a good way to structure, organize, sort, categorize, whatever, tag them. And it is, I think it is something that might actually be fun when you're bored, when you're, I don't know, again, when you're sitting in the bus or riding a, ride, riding a train um, and you're like, hmm, what should I do? Um, well, I could actually organize my 200 trees into a better structure system. And that is something that can be easily done on a smartphone. Um, yeah. True. Yeah. Another question. Will there be a way for a user to define or label or add to labels of assets? Yes, for yourself. Yes, easily. And in the next step, it is also already being planned. It's it's not going to be part of the first implementation, but we already have built in the ways and means to take kind of um, to look at tags that are constantly being added to assets that we didn't tag that way. So the um the assets that are on on the marketplace or that are in the content subscription can inherit texts that are being constantly used by other users so there are means to that too awesome awesome all right so quite a lot to think about um, yeah and also quite a big task for andy to do so that's why it's still going on going on going on but we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, and I'm super excited to share that with you once we are ready for it. Lovely, and we will bring it to you uh, here, of course. So that's another reason to watch the show. That's the first reason. To watch the show. We'll show you some more reasons later on. Okay, so <laughs> recently, till you, well, Dungeon Fog was involved in a live stream, uh, Flucht aus Kaladrak. Mm -hmm. which uh, was German live stream um, role-playing session uh, in order to raise money for charity. Exactly. Yes, Tell exactly. about that charity. Yes. So Tierpark Raumberg is, is um, an, animal, an animal park in Germany um, that kind of, I felt related to them because uh, we had our struggles with COVID um and and they had their struggles too because they had because of the lockdowns they had to close down quite a lot um which is really hard for for a kind of um non-governmental individually run um animal park and um so we decided that we want to do a charity stream together with um german streamers and bloggers and and influencers and and tiktokers and we wanted to bring together people who who run a german live stream um but for a good cause and we're collecting money to help the tier park um to actually kind of get back up on the feed um feed their animals make sure that that everything is back back rolling as it was before the lockdowns hit them um so on the 9th of june we um organized that stream it was run by sebastian who is um who i think did an amazing job as a game master and if you are german speaking and you have missed it um you you can see the link behind me um go to dungeonfog.com stf or directly on our youtube um where you can watch the show it's with on youtube we split it into part one and part two because in total i think it was five hours um of of gaming um it was hilarious uh a lot of fun a lot of fun to watch there there were quite a few um vloggers from the gaming scene but not from a role-playing scene um that found their first steps into D D through that game um 
So again, if you, um, apologies if you're not German speaking, I think YouTube has done subtitles, um, but they German. might. They don't do German to English. It doesn't seem like that. I tried to look myself. Oh, unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so uh, Duolingo. Um, <laughs> no, I, if if you're not intended to quickly learn German, I'm afraid this is not so much for you. But if you're German speaking um watch it enjoy it i think it was a lot of fun and again look at dungeonfuck.com slash stf there you can find all the details about how you can help us help tierpark Raumberg. there you go lovely now you had to do some maps for that live stream and we've got those maps here so you're gonna have some uh, have a look at these maps um let's look at the first one because it's quite an yes. unusual shape uh, yes it's a prison i'm assuming yes exactly you got it absolutely right it's a prison so there were a few um kind of pre-requirements to it because for the first time we also have been experimenting and this is going to be released to dungeon fork um after the show is over like uh, sorry after the event uh the event ends uh, i think on july the 31st so end of july the show is over, the event is over. Um, and then we will release the maps. And now coming back to what I initially said, the new thing that we experimented with, this map is actually built with pre-made room tiles. So when you when you look at them, you can see that they all have those corner closings, the prison cells. Um, they have those connector uh, rooms and each room consists of corners and straight walls so there's in total a set of 10 tiles um that you can click together to actually create the foundation of it and um it was an experiment we wanted to see how good can be map making in in our tools when you actually have those tiles available opposed to you draw the rooms with the room tool um now I'm indecisive. I feel like doing it with the room tool is still faster, but I can see the merits of 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 using tiles because they can be pre-decorated too. Um, so we're going to we're making it we we're handing it out. Everyone everyone can get those tiles and can play around with them. And I'm super excited to get your feedback on whether or not you prepare uh, prefer that type of of map creation. But yes, this was a prison and the goal for the players was to escape the prison. I'm not sure how much I should spoil, um, but let's let's keep it very general. Um, they start in a prison, uh, apparently in Keladrak, which seems to be the reason why they need to escape from Keladrak. Um, they are the ones who are fluchting. They are the ones who are fluchting, right. <laughs> um, to mix German and English together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right exactly so that was that one and i think um i think it was even watching the stream and, and seeing how they kind of tiptoed the ways around the corners i think it worked really nicely with the lighting and unfortunately we can't zoom in i'm not sure if you can see it on stream but i had a lot of fun playing around with i had to actually manually upload my own prop for that because apparently dungeon fork didn't have that beforehand um, but there, I used a special prop that created those um, prison bar prison bar lights. Mm. Um, I have a few questions about this map. As a matter of fact, um, the walls. How did you achieve the the wall effect? Because they've got columns built into them. Yes, those circular shape. Is that the tile system? No, I did. So, so the tiles actually were created. It's a bit weird if you think about it. The tiles were created in Dungeon Fog mm. using map templates. Um, and Bodhi did an amazing job on on, on creating kind of a, a a template that you can use to style those because they, those are 10 tiles and we will see them in a minute in another map mm. with a different kind of design to them. Um, but they're the same tiles. However, I went then into Dungeon Fog um, and I created those columns by using um, the column prop set into above wall state. And um, I 
think if I'm correct, I either used a small wall frame that got a circular indent, or I actually used a shape um, to create that indent so that those columns uh, can be part of the wall. And then the gray layering around the edge. That is a shape. Is, it, is that just a shape? That's if just a shape that list. is not above walls, so it can sit at the bottom of the room. I see. I see. Okay. Well, it's. I, I think you all agree. It's a pretty good map. Right. That's map number one. Map number two. You said we can see those uh, tiles. Yes. So yeah. actually, that was um, a bit of cheating here. So um, you can see the, the the straight and and crossroad tiles. But when it came to the um, to those underground lakes, there are three lakes there. Each each holds a different kind of challenge, and the players had to decide which one will probably not kill them um, most likely. So when it came to those lakes, it kind of show, showed the flaws of a of a tile based creation system because um it can never be as organic as a hand-drawn cave so there i we we kind of deviated a bit away from it and i actually created um shapes that are out of the tiles mm -hmm. um but i i enjoyed it in uh, creating the map because i saw that i was able to combine both kind of methods I was using tiles to lay out the, the, the hallways and, and the pathways. But then I refer to regular pathing to create the um the cave like the, the water caves. There you go. Fantastic. All right. And then we've got another slide. A yes, maze. so this a maze. Fun. And it is this one again is completely created with the tiles. That was actually for me, first, it was a bit of of, of, of of a hassle to work my brain around which tile do I have do I have to place where to to create that labyrinth. Um, but when it when I saw how it all came together, I was quite impressed that 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 you can and you can very quickly do it because again, it's basically with with the prop tool, the prop contains the tile, so the tile is not more than a prop. You rotate it, place it done and you can very quickly clack 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 put together all the all the pathways and and create that maze um and afterwards i just went in and added some props added some coloring added some some brushes to make it look more organic um i was quite happy with the outcome of that maze because it should be like a naturally semi naturally formed underground maze and I feel like it conveys that feeling quite nicely. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. Okay, hopefully, folks, you're being inspired here by looking <laughs> at these these maps. I'm looking at some of it, and I'm going, I don't know how you achieve that. Uh, it's it's great. I love it. And I like I, this is what I love doing is looking at these maps and then unpicking them and and, and going, ah, oh, okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at that. Uh, so here I noticed that you use two props to make your Cthulhu statue. Exactly. Um, I, yeah. Do you do that often? Do you often yes. combine two together to yes. make something? Yes, I very much enjoy the idea of, of, of combining props or giving them a different purpose. There is um, there's one map that is part of the epic location map pack um, from the book where I was super proud of using a head from a statue and then the body of a commoner beneath water to actually create the 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 illusion of that the statue is kind of prolonging itself into the depths of the lake. Um, so, yeah, I, I do enjoy combining different props into new ones. And I can only say that the new asset manager um, will actually be able to kind of support those ideas even better in the future. Fantastic. Fantastic. Till can people get these maps? Off? Yes. 
Oh, dungeon fog or not yet because um uh so the idea is that I, I actually have to remember I don't want to say something wrong. Um if you're not I think ugh. so it will be available on Dungeon. Let's let's keep it like that. It will be available on Dungeon Fog. It will definitely be there available. I think there is a period where people can get it beforehand if they use the um the office on 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 the website to support the tier pack um but eventually it will all land on our community hub um or the marketplace where you can then grab those maps and the tiles that you made yes. those don't require a special plugin or anything like that though. no no, they actually, we, we just, when we experimented with it, what we did was we used the existing prop tool. It's basically, it's a, it's, it's a new prop pack just consisting of tiles. Um, and you can quickly use them to put them together to create those maps. Again, this one is done with the tiles, um, exclusively. I see chat is saying that I'm quite soft and you're quite loud. So one of us has to go up and one of us has to come down. Um, so I don't know what's happened there. I'm going to turn you down to. Yes. Okay. How's that? Chat? How's that now? I'm, I'm seeing stuff that is hopefully not bursting your ears anymore. Hang on a moment. So zoom. So they've updated OBS. Just talk again, Till. Yes, I'm talking again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I, I know what's happened. And I apologize, uh, everybody. Uh, so what was happening was it's picked up that you're coming in from Zoom and added you as a separate audio track. So you were effectively being doubled because I was already getting audio from Zoom oh. anyway. All right, well, thank you for that sneaky update, OBS. I think it came out last <laughs> week. Um, so that should be a little bit better for you folks. Uh, you don't have Till coming through twice. Um, but uh, I'll have to remember that for the next uh, slide that we go to, the next thing that we go to. Okay, it's time for the community map uh, yes. reveal. Spotlights. Yes. Spotlights, absolutely. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I need to do community map highlight. <laughs> like those i do like those all right uh right so community spotlight and this week uh we've got some some pretty good maps we've got some returning names as well yeah we have some returning and, names uh, um yeah which is good which is good um and... but before we go there there was a question which uh, was asked and this is talking again about the asset manager so just before mm -hmm. we go into community um Will no, let me, yeah, yes, that's a great question. Will the V6 renderer contain support for animated formats? And I'm reading this as it's written, such as WebM, WebP, GIF, and or, and I'm assuming you want me to pronounce it incorrectly, GIF. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, animated formats will be supported by the new renderer. Um, because the current renderer simply can't do it. Um, however, not all those formats will be will be part of the support because some of them are, I would say, not state of the art. Um, especially the GIF um, is probably a format that at least we're not putting any big effort into supporting it. Um, there, like WebM, for example, is a really, really good format for doing this. Um, and um, it's so the renderer is built in a way that it can automatically render those. However, it also needs we need to update our viewers, for example, and the way that we export those things. Like for, if, if you think about it, um, if you put flickering torches onto your map, it's nice that they're flickering for you while you are drawing your map, but basically that would be like you're you're drawing something in Photoshop and it it is animated for you, but at the end you save it as a JPEG. Um, mm. So it doesn't really make sense that way. 
for it making sense, we have to actually think about ways of how you put animated assets onto your map and what you get out of it at the end, because then suddenly we're talking about you want to export a video. Um, if you want to have a video map that actually has, I don't know, mm. shaking trees, flickering torches, things like that. Um, or you want to use our Dungeon Fork viewers, which is in that case actually easier because then they just have to place those props onto the map for um, for your players. And we also have to think about ways on how to export it to external partners, like for example, Foundry, um, because you want to, you probably want to have those animated assets in your Foundry map if you're using Foundry as a VTT, mm. right? Um, so putting those props in is actually not the biggest challenge that we're facing. The biggest challenge is to see how we can output it so that it makes sense. What, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. Your questions answered. You just have to ask. The first map uh, yes. that we've got, which I think is pretty cool, uh, it's um, this one. Let me know what you think, folks. I uh, think it's really cool. It's it's modern. Or would you say it's maybe cyberpunk? Yeah, we had a hard time decide. I think the the the, the glowing um neon light colors and, and the, the mm. kind of the, the pink for me makes it cyberpunky. Um but it is kept in a way that it could also be like a Broadway alleyway situation in just a modern setting. Um, there's a lot of love to lighting and color combinations. I think the way that the, um, again, that those neon lights shine and the, the street lamps combine, plus the general color setup, I think is quite nice. And also, uh, a lot of love and detail on the um, on on adding clutter and um, kind of small bits and pieces that make it look alive. Um, and yet, at the same time, there's definitely a code that's going on because the rooms are not and they are purposefully not filled in. Uh, I mean, it's just, we're just seeing the roofs, aren't we? The, the the ceilings, I suppose. I think this those are the ceilings. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you go, okay, so this is, we're street level and we're ceiling level, mm -hmm. you know, so, so, so what's going on here? D did you look if the map had multiple levels in it? Uh, I didn't, um, I didn't check. Cause that might be another clue. Anyway, it's a beautiful yeah. map. By so who did it? Dr. I can't Colomy. read it. Um, Dr. It's... Colomy. Dr. Colomy, right. Yeah. And it's called Rundown Housing Block by Dr. Yes. Colomy. You can find it in, if, if you like the map, if you want to grab it and use it for your games or just check out how it was made. Um, it is now featured in our community hub um, as the latest um, community Thanks, spotlight, right? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> my brain is slowly dripping out my ears. Um, Yes, and also um, it is, of course, awarded with our Community Spotlight badge. There you go. Uh, Lensman de Leoncourt says, it is post-apocalyptic. Must be post-apocalyptic. Post okay. Well, let's see. Let's see. Thank you. Moving on, we have someone who's no stranger to the channel. Uh, That's true. Their maps are truly awesome. This is Inside the Chest, Flooding Chamber by yes. Lord God. By Lord God, it's, I think, I mean, it's Lord God, it's acting champion of uh, the madness. Right. Um, for now, I know that there has been issued a challenge and we are going yeah. to see if Lord God can keep the title this fall. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But it is, as always, um, it is in terms of color combinations, in terms of, of, of shapes, details. It comes with a very nice description of what's going on here on the map. Um, so if you're intrigued and you want to find out what's actually going on here, I can only say mm. it's it's not a nice place to be there. Um, probably some, some place that you want to get out quickly. 
Yeah. Um, and again, it's it's a great map, and um, it is again as 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 all our community spotlights um, work. It is it has been on the hottest map section. Um, it has been sitting there for quite a while, so that's why it's again um, Lord got making into our community spotlight. Congratulations. Someone who I believe is new. I yeah, I think so too. Dramatic Dragons. Dramatic yeah. Dragons brings us Jungle Journey number one, River Bridge. And yes. what a lovely river it is. Water is quite a tricky thing uh, to get right. And I think they've got it right here. Absolutely. And not only that, um, I think the way that if you look closely, the way that there are several different props combined to create this almost three-dimensional bridge yes was also a really good job um Absolutely. i i i'm always happy to see that the new um backgrounds and the new uh brushes are are being in use mm -hmm. and i do sincerely hope that this is going to spark more and more maps from new users going into uh, the hottest map section because it should make life so much easier to create stunningly looking maps, yeah. um, which of course will make other users clone it, grab it, like it, and, and push it, it into the hottest map section. There you go. Yeah. Last map for this evening is, again, also someone who I think may be new. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, is Boxcar Cat has supplied us with this awesome shipping warehouse. I might. Really cool. I can't say if Boxcar Cat is new. I'm pretty sure I'm following him or her on um, on the hub because there's there are a lot of good maps out there because I think what Boxcar Cat does really good is lighting and yeah. color composition. It is really nice it's a great map um and i'm pretty sure i already have it in my backlog of random random encounter maps where i say okay i yes. need i need a storage facility or i need a back back room um because <laughs> i just love what's being stored is there's <laughs> crates there's armor there's a coffin with a body in it you know just the usual kind of stuff that yeah you sure need, uh, what you store. what you happen to find i mean <laughs> That's what you find, right? In That's medieval fantasy yeah. storages. Storage. There you go. Folks, that is the community spotlight for this month. Congratulations to everybody who uh, was uh, selected and who made it through. And uh, hopefully your map will be featured next time. And so remember to share it with the community. It can't be voted for if it's not out there. Till that's it for Battle Map Editor. Almost. And, uh, there's one. Yeah, right. There's one announcement. There's one announcement. There's there's one 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 last announcement. Yeah. Before announcement. before guys are signing off on um, yeah. like ah Battle Map news are over. Um, I just wanted to make you all aware that there is going to be a stream break in July. Uh, I am actually with my family on vacation at the end of July, so. Um, we're not going to do a mapping it out stream in July, but we will catch up with all the stuff that has happened in August. Um, so just keep that in mind. I did suggest that I could do a stream on my own, but they were worried that I was just going to answer yes to any requests and <laughs> give you un, you know un, unreasonable deadlines for yeah 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 we'll finish it yeah next yeah month. next we'll week next sure so it you has can have been that spoken too. so you can it have shall that. be done. And you exactly. can have that, exactly. and you can have that. <laughs> so there you go. There you are. All right, so that does bring us to the end of the Battle Map Editor. And so we will be coming back shortly, just after one little commercial break, uh, with Mapping It Out for Project Deos, where we have a wonderful demo, probably. <laughs> Oh, no, now I've muted you. 
Okay, uh, folks, I'm just going to apologize straight up. I do not know what is going on with my OBS. Uh, there are bonus audio channels. I've got desktop audio one, desktop audio two, zoom audio. All this stuff's been added in to just all of the channels. So just pretend that you didn't hear any of that about updating anything and move on. <laughs> move on. Just move on. Jedi mind trick or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, welcome to Project Deos Mapping It Out, where we take you behind the scenes on Deos and what's happening. And what's happening is exciting. We've got a lot of very interesting things coming up for you tonight, particularly a demo. So we've got a new patch. We've got um, roads, 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 roads. And that's pretty much it. That's that's all we've got. But it's amazing stuff. As usual, if you have a question, please put the word question in caps in front of your question into chat so that I can have a look and see it. And if you have just joined us, we are live on Twitch. We're no longer live on YouTube, but the videos are now saved onto YouTube for later viewing. So there you are. And let's uh, tilt, start going straight into everything. Uh, the latest patch is yes. 0 0.5.12. Yes, it is the, it's not the latest patch. It's the next patch um, because it's coming up. So uh, 0 0.5.12 is in preparation. We're finishing everything up um, and it is coming soon. Um, it is I I'm 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 not fairly certain. So there's a bit of a blunder that I made um that is actually now delaying the patch a bit, and that is I forgot that Keora is currently moving to Greece. Um and that means that all his stuff is in boxes and being shipped over to Greece before he can set it up there. So we are currently waiting on the next asset pack. And he said he is in the process of moving and he might be able to give me the assets next week, but it might be the week after. And um, I, I, again, I, he told me that on time. Um, and then I forgot to remember him. And then when I actually remembered that I should be saying something about it, he was already like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, it's all in the boxes. And I was like, okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. We will bring the patch um, when the assets are there. Um, it's coming with a few hot fixes. It's coming with a few kind of stability improvements, but mainly it's coming with the new assets, which we will see in a second. Mm, lovely. Okay, a uh, quick question before we jump in there. Uh, will the PNGs for space travel last month set be released on the website soon yes they will be released on the website soon again my apologies um that was my job and i didn't do it um it is um it's already sitting on my desk i just need to upload them and tell uh herbert who's 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 the one who's actually adding them the download button to the website he's going to do it it will be um yeah, it will be probably tomorrow or Thursday. Then the button is there. We saw you. We saw your 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 message on Discord. Thank you very much, and it kind of incentivized me to very quickly catch up on that. Aha! All right, something worth looking at. Uh, the V six renderer is needed for the battle map editor in order to integrate it into Deos. Yes. Will this be the last major step before Deos enters beta? What? Sorry. The the having the having the, the V six renderer. renderer for the battle map editor. Um undecided yet. I think I think um we are currently more leaning towards the idea of having um the city map editor and once the city map editor is finished to have one final clean up for world maps because there's still stuff that needs to be improved and then enter beta um because that means that um the the v6 renderer will take some time to be finished mm. and in the meantime you can create your battle maps online um so prolonging our alpha state until that is ready i think is a bit of a of a stretch um, but to be 
fairly certain we haven't simply decided yet how, how the naming convention is going to be there. Okay, that's fair. You're talking about the new map pack that will release once patch yes. 0.5.12 comes out. And the map pack is, uh, well, can anyone guess what the map pack is? Uh, you'll have to go down to guess. Deep down is what I'm saying. Uh, so there you are. There you are. Uh, well, someone already has the answer. Uh, shouting it from the rooftops, or should I say from the caves. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, I'm sure this information is made public anyway. It's just me having a little bit of fun. Don't judge me. So here we go. It is the Underdark. The Underworld. Yes. Absolutely. And there's some beautiful assets in here. Let's have a look at what they are. Oh, just look at those. Look at those. Uh, the temples are in their own right spectacular. Yes. Those purple structures in the top of the top middle of the image. I love I'm, those. I, I'm a big fan of those fungus mountains, fungus fungi structures. I'm not sure what they are, but they are absolutely fantastic. I can I can totally see how you could create a a map using those not even and it, here's a little side story for that i was actually um i wanted to hold that back i said no we're not going to do the underdark setting um in summer because our world map editor currently cannot do we have a specific setting in mind where you can switch your map making um into an underworld map making um and I said, well, we should hold back on the Underdark settings until our world map editor can do it. But Keora was, I think he's really proud of, he can be, of course, um, really proud of this. And he was like, no, they do really, they work on, uh, like on top in regular plane, they work mm -hmm. as well. Um, so why, why are you holding back on them? Hand them out. And I said, okay, sure. Um, if you want them out already, I'm happy to do it. So there you go. Mm. I think they work. Yes, absolutely. It, it, it's it's always just more more power, and I I particularly like the MOHSs. Don't you? The what? Come again, please. The MOHSs. The, oh, the MOHSs. Yeah. <laughs> the mushrooms of humongous size. <laughs> the mushrooms of humongous size. MOHSs. Absolutely. I can see forests being made out of those. They are, are, are really, really, really stunning. Um, so there we go. Those are the new assets that will be coming out as soon as Cairo is unpacked in Greece. And just so that you know, he's not moving within Greece. He is moving to Greece from somewhere else, a different country. So uh, yes. crazy times, moving continents is always difficult. Uh, I know. Okay. Let's talk about roads, because they have taken up quite a lot of time. And so City Map Maker has been waiting for the roads to be fixed and to be working. And so we have a roadmap for roads. A roadmap for roads. Well, actually, we kind of passed that almost complete because the roads tool is done. Um, there were a few bits and pieces that I wasn't able to show last stream mm. um, that have now found the way in. Um, but we made, I'm super proud of, of, of my team. They made an amazing progress in, in the last month. Um, if, you, if you remember the roadmap that I showed to you last time, um, the basically everything that was sitting beneath that orange bar that says roads props or something like that mm -hmm. um, was still work in progress or was even being planned and tackled within the next two months. I changed them now to green and I've moved them to the left because they are already completed. So the whole core setup for creating a map, um, uh, uh, a city map, is done. You, we, we now have two different modes. You can create a world map and you have tools for the world map there and you can create city maps and you have tools for the city maps there. So that whole infrastructure has been already completed. Then the next one is um, 
we've received the um, kind of, I would say, almost finished first pack from Keora, uh, the village pack, with, I don't remember, it's probably 150 assets um, for village creation. And that is also already implemented. So our tools can now differ between, are you creating a world map or are you creating a city map? Which asset libraries would you like to see there? Um, there are some bits and pieces. That's why props has um, an extended bar where we will have to come back to our props and rework the prop tool to some extent. Like for example, we still have, we're going to see it probably, we still have the set indexing in there, which doesn't make sense on a city level. We need to get rid of that. Um, and there is something that you're going to hear more often in the next couple of streams, which is tethering that we will still need to do. Um, but the prop tool is, I would say, almost finished and just needs some adjustments here and there. And I can't read it from here. What's what's the been brushes? CME brushes. brushes. Yes. So the basic, oh, the, the, the brushes, that's the one that is um, currently being worked on. Um, we have the same brush tool as in the world map editor already implemented. However, it's only semi-useful on a city scale um, because you really want to use uh, texture brushes and not just color brushes. Um, so that is being worked on at the moment. And the big orange bar that sits on top of all of that is what we are still working on. This is um, we're making progress, but it's slow progress because we have to kind of compare concepts and bring ideas together. That is, how do we treat the roads when we are placing buildings while you draw roads? How mm -hmm. does that work? And we are quite confident that by the end of August, we have the answer to that and it is made available. Um, but right now it's just being developed. It's happening um, as we as we trot along. That does bring a question from chat. Uh, are we going to get an alpha test release of this anytime soon? So I said in the last stream um, that we are going to, for, for those who are mm. following us on Discord, um, we aren't going to release a developer's build um, on Discord for people who want to grab it and, and try it out. Um, and the way that the whole thing works means that if we push the city map editor as an alpha state into Deus, it is available to everyone um, and I'm not handing it out through the deployment system before we internally are in super certain that it is stable. Um, so we're not going to push any development build into the tool that is running the world map editor, but we will hand out uh, a, a very rough alpha build for those who want to play around with it through Discord once we have um, at least, and you, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to see me crush it today. Um, so it's still it's still a bit wobbly um, because there are so, <laughs> I saw that guy. Um, because there are so many edge cases when you, when you combine roads um, that the software doesn't properly catch at the moment. Um, and there's at least two more weeks um, of, of bug fixing involved in there. And um, I would say in August, we will be ready to give you something to play around with it. Hmm. Let's hope. Let's hope. But for now, you have a demo to crush. I mean, yes. demonstrate. Hey, yes, I have a demo. Well, let's be honest. We know we know the mapping in out streams. There's almost no chance that I'm not going to crush it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a look at the demo. And so let's switch when you are ready. Yep. Yes. Three, two, one, switch. And I just have to do something quickly to you, which is to get rid of your chroma key. There you go, brilliant. You're golden, and hopefully you're only coming through on one audio channel because- uh, One, two, three, four, yeah, five. You are, all right, all I good. Am. Okay. Right, so, what are we looking at? So first of all, um, we're looking at a map that I 
cannot save at the moment because if I press save, um, I'll crash it. Um, so here's here, here's an important kind of side story. Um, Ilya and um, Henry, who who were both working on this, they were so excited to put as much of the the stuff that they have made over the past couple of weeks into the latest build that they have been working until I would say three and a half hours ago um, to give me all the new stuff in something that I can show, which means that it is not tested in to a degree where we were able to kind of get all the cross-referencing bugs that might show up. And I was like, yeah, okay, sure. It's, it's, it's mapping it out, which means I'm going to crash the software anyway. So give me whatever you have. And we will look at it. Um, but calling this build volatile, I think, doesn't even do its justice. Um, <laughs> so we will see. I can't save it, which means marvel at what you see. Um, the second I crash it and I relaunch it, we will have to redo the map from scratch. <laughs> um, but here you can see that I have... Um, do you see? Is anything happening? No, I'm afraid it's not, right? No, we can see you talking, but... You can uh, see me you... talking, but you don't see... Oh, there you go. No, we didn't crash the software. We crashed OBS. Um... Okay, <laughs> well, I'll. Uh, you can rejoin the call. I'll uh, chat to our fans here yes. for a while. Give me a second. I have to reboot OBS. All right. Well, hopefully we're not hearing Till while he's rebooting OBS. Yes, we are, because it's all here. Folks, of course, you know, these are always live shows. We're trying to bring you the uh, sh the latest. As you can see, Till was saying up until three and a half hours ago, they're working on this stuff uh, so that they can show you exactly what's going on. Now, if you are not yet a member of the discord.gg forward slash Dungeon Fog channel, I suggest you jump on there because... There is so much going on and you get to sometimes chat directly to the, 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 the folks in the office as they're working through things. And of course, they love your feedback. And that's one of the better platforms, I think, anyway, to do that. Now, if you are looking for tutorials on how to up, up your Dungeon for game, head on over to the YouTube channel because there are lots and lots and lots of tutorials showing you pretty much everything you could want um and uh well i would recommend that you go and watch them not because i made them but because we made them for you principally a quick question to everyone in the audience have you shared your maps in the community uh sp space yet that's what i'm asking a big thank you to bodisaurus as well of course who is in chat as the moderator sharing that link for uh, the discord group there let me know if you've shared your maps in the community space and if you haven't perhaps let me know why uh, is it because your maps are private because they're personal because you don't want to share them because you don't think they're good enough to be shared i'm sure that can't be the reason anyway till's back so let's see if we can get some more of this demo happening and uh, here we go Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Um, which I would say is where we're going for now at the moment, um, village creation. And um, they are now in there and we are now, I, I use them to create um, the maps here so we can see barrels and we can see, let's put a mushroom here. Um, and if you're wondering what those weird circles are that you can mm. see, that's actually something um that has recently found its way in it was on our checklist for um roads road creation um and that 
is wrote into sections. This is not for you something you're going to see when you use the software. This is for internal testing to see when a road actually intersects and the software can detect it. Because as you might notice, it not always detects it properly at the moment, and we need to kind of work out the details. But what does road intersection mean? It means that if I pick such a road and I move it, as you can see, the intersection stays intact and the roads move along. I probably should be going up there a bit so you can see it. Um, so I can, and here again, here it's not, it's not working, it's not detecting, and we need to figure out why it's not snapping here. Um, but most of those roads are now properly intersected and you can move them. So now if you remember, I was saying something about tethering. And the reason I talked about that is because the buildings are not tethered to roads yet. So if I move that road, the buildings are not following along, but that's not where we want to be. We want to be at a point where when a building is um, tethered to a road, that when you move the road, the buildings follow along. Um, so how do I create those intersections? So now we're getting into the, if you want to see something specifically of the existing map, ask now, because now we're getting into the danger zone. <laughs> So there was a little bit of an audio drop bef as you started, and I'm trying to think what you were saying there specifically, just that these are the part of the asset packs um, that Kaora is, is released. This yes. is the, 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 what we're seeing here. And yes. you've manually placed these props. I, I manually placed these, um, and I've created this, this little map here. Um, we are... When it, so this is village setting because the way that those buildings come together is more villagey than big city because in big cities those buildings would be much much denser and they might have different rooftop heights rather than uh, like city blocks that's what I'm talking about they would create city blocks rather than having um, those those kind of garden areas around each building. Um, so um, this is something that we're going to tackle um, in a different approach. But when it comes for fantasy villages, this would be the first set that Keora has created for it. Right. And so as you are drawing roads, you, the, the, it's not automatically placing props yet. No, 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 no. The whole prop placement is what we saw on the, um, on the road map. That is what we, you remember that in one of the earliest builds, we already had that in there, um, mm. but it was more of a prototype experiment um, to see if it would be viable to have that approach. Now we're going back in with the details and we say, okay, how is it going to place buildings that are not just rendered, but are placed as elements on the map tethered to the road, adjustable, interchangeable, so you can really start with the road artery system, but then work on the details and go in with, with on a building level, basically. Makes sense. Uh, another question is, are you planning on adding village palisades, city walls, and acres yes. to the villages? Yes, so acres are already in there. I can place one. Um, haven't done it yet because I'm also learning those new assets as, I, as I'm as i testing. But there are acre assets. I think those are the ones. They're a bit small probably at the moment. Let's just take both of them. So there are a few in there. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, let's move over there. So this is what we have currently as part of the of the asset pack. Um, it, I would say that they are probably too small, so mm. we might need to adjust 
the their, their initial sizing. It is in it is at a hundred percent. So that's this is how Kiora envisioned it. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the artist here. Um, but I'm not sure if it is the best approach to have them as single prop entities or rather have them as a pathing tool or a brush, mm. um, which I think would be more convenient to create with. Um, when it comes to city walls, yes, palisades and city walls are going to be there. And if you again look at the roadmap that I, that I showed before, they are something that we are going to tackle at the end of the process um, because they are, they can, we're afraid that they eat up a lot of time um, until they are perfected. Um, excuse me. And we want to make sure that we have all the rest ready or in a state where we can say, okay, now we can actually take the time and play around with them. Okay. But I'm, I'm still trying to, um show you how those road creations work so probably let's see if i cannot crash the map initially um so when you when you create a road right um so you you you, you drag a road here let's do it something like that um you will see you will notice that whenever you drag the road it kind of it already paths very nicely and does stuff that we want to. And you can see that it has those road intersection points. And I can, of course, I can add more points to it wherever I like. Um, and uh, of course I can remove them too. So what happens when two roads start to meet, meet each other, you will see that they snap and this is the radius within a road point is detected. So if I'm going to add another, we see that here is a rope point. Um, if I'm going to draw it like here, it now is going to either snap to the top one or the bottom one. It took the top one and snapped it here. Um, but now they are connected and now I can move them. And I think this is a very convenient way to actually go in your road artery system and then modify the roads um until they have the right aesthetics to how you want them to look like so let's try that here again and if you there's no point here so as you can see now it tries to get the closest points and bring them together um which is one of those edge cases um and it kind of it's a bit weird at the moment so those are, oh shit, that's not what i wanted to do um we're getting to the point where I'm breaking it. Oh, now I've connected it to the other road. Oh, interesting. Um, yes, questions? So uh, these roads are all the same size. What if you made a, a, a thinner road and then you, yes. you connected it in? What happens then? It will most likely die. Um, haven't tested that yet. We will see. So now I have a thinner road and I bring it in. Oh, it works. <laughs> Surprise discovery. I have faith in the designers and in the programmers. They know exactly what they're doing. Next question. How many intersection points or how many roads can intersect? Oh, now we're really getting into the experimental parts of it. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, I would say... Oh, oh, so, oh. I would say almost indefinite um, from a programming perspective. It shouldn't be a problem, but we will see. So let's do this. Let's bring in one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Let's stick down here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah, and if you move the single point? Yeah, of course. That's the next thing we're going to do. And it works beautifully. Look at and that. And it works beautifully. Yeah. It gets it gets really so so the, the reason the reason why I got warned um is I'm doing that now on a separate road. Um when you have when you have roads that you start to prolong. Um and now I have a sec uh, a second road that is also prolonging. 
right? Um, when I move this point on that point, they will connect. Snip, now they are connected. So they are now one connected road. Um, however, they are still two road entities that are now being connected. So if I start to um if I start to create oh where can we do road intersections on those and now I'm going to prolong that into self intersecting and I'm going to use it to close that road let me just take a last look at my beautiful map um okay huh still alive okay so anyway that's where it's going to break because the way that the looping and the detection needs to kind of catch what the initial road was, what the new road design is and how those self-intersecting roads are still kind of in the right trajectories. Um, that's, it's just, it's tedious work to catch all those edge cases, see why it breaks and then kind of close that loop or close that gap. Um, um, and that's just something that Ilya is 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 constantly working on and improving um, mm. until it is stable to a degree where it not suddenly crashes on you while you while you draw maps. Another question: What yeah. happens if you now can you split the road back? So let's say you've got your intersection, then you're like, ah, eh, actually, I don't want it to connect. I want the the the, the detection boxes are too close. For so example. there is a, so. there is already uh, I'm trying to let me go in there. Um, so there is a, there's there are the means to split the road already. Um, so I can oh I can split it here, but now it is unfortunately you have to split it far. Yes, I have to split it yeah. far. Let me try that again, and I have to move it over. You made a baby road. I made a baby road. And, I, oh, and no, now it's, it's joined in with its, its mother. It's a monster. Endlessly <laughs> snapping at everywhere. So it's, the snapping is is very adamant. I think the radius is too big at the moment. So Either that or it needs to be a hotkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that you can just hold control and it will snap. or And it will snap, exactly. Or it won't snap. Mm. Um, but I should I should be able to split it up the problem is now i have to move it uh far away to avoid that it snaps and now it's connected again those roads don't <laughs> want to be split that's what it is <laughs> there you okay. go there you okay. go now that one is a bit what is it a little <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> It is a demo. I mean, yeah, we're yeah, trying, it to, is we're trying to break this it. Is, this is mid-development. Mid this yeah. is where we're currently at. I'm super happy with the way that the that the road artery snapping works. So it solves the problem that we initially had when we said, how, how can you combine different roads into one and keep it editable? Um, now it's basically, it's kind of, it's, it's fine-tuning to... Get it in 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 a way that people are getting the result that they are expecting when they're working with it. I'm pretty sure Ilya is taking notes while we do this and like, oh yeah, right, I need to fix that. Oh yeah, right, I need to reduce the radius. Oh 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 yeah. Well, chat is saying we need to have or you need to have more faith in your company's software developers. Uh, I, no, don't take me wrong. I, I have a lot of it. It didn't crash. That is no. brilliant. Although yeah. I got warned a lot. Um, I think they're doing an amazing job mm -hmm. when you think about that. Um, it's it's just I'm aware of how finicky um, it can get when you have all those various edge cases and, and, and scenarios that you probably didn't anticipate until you mm -hmm. see people working with it. And that's why I was instantly on board when people were asking for an alpha. I just don't want to make it part of the software release. I, mm -hmm. I'd rather have a Discord alpha release where I say, okay, guys, here's a build, break it, um, but give us feedback because that means that people who grab it really know that they are going to get something where we want to have feedback on when did you break it? How did you break it? What was the problem? Can you reproduce it? 
there's a different mindset to testing something to figure out if we've caught all edge cases than just to play around with a new tool. Exactly. Exactly right. Exactly. Uh, Tim, is there anything else that you wanted to show us in this this demo? I mean, it's been I want fantastic. to break it. <laughs> okay, so actually, let's do something a bit more curved here. Is it not? Is it's not? Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, we broke <laughs> yeah. it. Don't don't go to the curve mode. The curve mode doesn't Cur work. Yeah. Curve mode doesn't work. All right, let's switch back. Um... <laughs> yes. And three, two, one. And I'm going to turn your green screen back on. Oh, you're seeing all the magic disappearing. All right, there we go. Folks, just a reminder that there is no stream in July. There is no stream in July. We will be back most likely in August, where we will have all of the wonderful updates and things to talk about. All of these wonderful, wonderful yes. things. Yes. Any last words from you on today's show? No, as always, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your amazing questions. I hope if you are not yet on Discord, we, we, we can catch you on Discord. We can invite you there. Join us. Um, all our devs are there. There's a lot. There's an amazing community. We all chat there, hang out there. Um, apart from that, Guy, thank you as always for being our amazing host. <laughs> and Technical issues notwithstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I can't wait to see you all in August when I'm pretty sure I have a lot of cool stuff to show them. Absolutely. Until next time then, it remains to be said, happy map, map making. Aha, I got there before you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a good day. It's a good day. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.